Welcome back to the Josefa Salinas Show. We are having so much fun today with the godmother of Latino Hollywood, Belle Hernandez. Her career started in 1983. She's been in movies like Selena. She was in one of Tom Cruise's first movies and talked about what a little travieso he was. And also uh, The Purge recently. And she's a mother. She's a wife. Her husband, very famous actor, Enrique Castillo. And we talked a little bit about how kind of tra challenging it can be to be married in this industry. Yep. Belle, you kind of moved off into journalism yes. with Latin Heat Magazine, and it is one of the most revered publications. If you want to know what's going on with Latinos in Hollywood, we go to Latin Heat. Right, right. Talk to me about the starting of that magazine and how that has evolved. Okay, and that's uh, because of the magazine, the uh, Movie Maker Magazine gave me that moniker of the godmother of Latino Hollywood. So. You know, that, that was very nice of them. But we started the magazine because we, um, the movie Frida was being cast in 1992. And they didn't audition Latinas. They auditioned two. And so we thought we were going to get to audition because there's never any good roles. And that one was a coveted role. So we thought we were going to get to audition. And we didn't. So um, they only uh, saw two Latinas. And then they gave the role to Laura San Giacomo. Uh, and, they, and we, uh, my friend uh, Diana Ortelli, got together a protest. And it was a national, it was national news. I remember. And so after that, we said, you know, Hollywood really thinks that there are no talented Latinos. So let's do a publication where we highlight these talented Latinos. And so that's what we did. We started that. And then little by little, I started not going out for my auditions because I would say, okay, do I stay here and make sure the publication gets published? Or do I go in for uh, an audition? Because it's not even, you have to go to an audition, then you have to go to, so it's a lot of time. So. I just started saying, oh, I'm, I'm not going. I'm just going to do the magazine. So, um, you know, we, like I said, there was a lot of people that we knew that were coming up that we gave them their first press, like Jay Hernandez, who is now on Hawaii Five O. No, is that it? Hawaii yeah. Five O? Mm -hmm. Mag no, Magnum mm -hmm. PI. Oh, right, that, right, right, right. But it's in Hawaii. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So Jay Hernandez was a little kid. Like he was, must have been like, 14 or 16 and his manager would like bug us can you please feature him can you please feature him we go sure and then after that they would go to Hollywood Reporter and say oh look they featured him in Latin Heat and they go oh okay but you know again he was not a big star at that point uh, and so you know I think that I felt we were doing a lot of of good stuff with the publication it was started by myself and um, uh, Lloyd Ramos and uh, some uh, like that little group that started the the protest. So we all were in there pitching for a while. And then they were actors, so they kind of like tapered off. And then Lloyd and I kept going. And then Lloyd also left. And so then I kept going with the ma magazine. But it's been like um, already like 25 years. And it's been just wonderful to see the industry grow from nothing to what it is now. It's, it, there's some growth there, and I'm happy that that's happening. So talk to me a little bit about the growth of Latinos in Hollywood. Because, like you said, that for Frida, they only looked at two yeah. Latinas to play Frida? Yeah. I mean, that's... And they that's said that there was no talented Latinas, you know, and that was their reason for hiring Laura San Giacomo. Of course, the movie never got made because um, there were because of the protests, because of a lot of different things. So they didn't get made. It was New Line, and they just said, nah, too much trouble, so they didn't do it. But that that cleared up the the road for Selma Hayek to do it, like, what, about six years later? Mm -hmm. She did her movie, and she did it right, and she played Frida. Right. So, like, we're happy with that outcome. But, um, yeah, so... We, we, I met a lot of people. We used to do an entertainment conference, too. So I've been seeing, like, okay, so it was Jennifer made it really big, and then the ind independent producers and directors, you know, like Robert Rodriguez did his um, mariachi series. Um, and so it started with the inter in independent filmmaker, and then little by little, I mean, we were always... Uh, looking for that decade of the Hispanic because they said it's coming, it's coming, it never came. I really think that this year has really been that blowout for us because there's been increases, but now you see like um, showrunners 
you know, with shows like One Day at a Time, Latinas. Uh, you, sh you see um, Vida. I don't know if you know that show. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, you see showrunners like, again, Norberto Barba, who runs uh, Mayans. He's the head guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he runs the show. Um, he was he was doing independent film when we met back in '84, and now he's one of the coveted showrunners. So he did FBI, he's doing FBI, and he's doing um, the Mayans MC. So there's a lot more people, there's a lot more talent, and then that talent is sure. Like Tanya Saracho, who is a showrunner for Vida, which is on Stars, she makes sure that she auditions all Latinos. She makes sure she brings in the writers who are going to write for her show because it's Latinx. And so she makes sure she gets that voice in the room. And now there's a lot of uh, furor over Latino shows. And, you know, like some of the top producers, women, Eva Langora, Tanya Saracho, uh, uh, Calette, uh, what's her name? Gloria Colette Calderon, uh, Cynthia Cidre, and they're all producing. America Ferrera produces her show. So it's like they're now producing content, and therefore they, they know that the uh, Latinos were underserved. So now they make sure to bring them into the room at least, where before you didn't even get to audition. Case in point, Frida. So it's an exciting time right now. So it has moved, and 2018 was a huge year. 2019 is definitely a year to look forward yes. and see the things that are coming in yes. 2019. So what do you think that we're going to see happening um, this year in 2019? Um, there's a lot of shows um, that are uh, now being run by uh, Latinos. There's Grand Hotel is a show that Eva Longoria is producing, and a lot of uh, top talent is in there. Um, Vida and of course uh, One Day at a Time has been like uh, si signaled as has been identified as one of the top shows. Um, there's a lot of independent producing that's being done. There's and and people with stories that are not narcos, you know, because right. narcos everybody loves narcos. And now we're not saying it's it's a bad it's a bad show. I'm, I like the show actually. One year I binge watched it, and of course it's. It's done really well. Uh, we're just saying it's like, really? Do we really need more uh, cartel shows? You know, it's like, give us a little bit more. Um, there's some really exciting shows are coming up from Latino heroes. There's one called The Beatle, and this is the first Latino superhero. So it's called The Beatle, and Warner Brothers is doing it. And there's, there's a several shows that are superheroes when we're going like we we're superheroes too so i'm really really excited about what's coming up because um people are just doing it on their own or they're actually going to convince the studios and the networks that you need to invest in this money and also there's a lot of latinos now investing in film because that's what you need the tyler perry uh kind of formula you know you need Latinos who understand these stories because really when you sometimes when you take these stories and pitch them to the studios since they've never heard of an astronaut like Jose Hernandez an astronaut they would go like why are you pitching a movie about a Latino astronaut you know I don't know that, that doesn't exist you go yeah it does you know yeah it does <laughs> yeah or or you know what's exciting too is that John Leguizamo with Latin History for Morons I mean, basically, that's it's his play, one man show, but it's also going to be on TV, and it's like this is there. This is history, rich history, that nobody really knows in the U.S. So he did this one man show, and then it's he filmed it for Netflix, and so all of our stories now are having more of a chance to get done. And your television show, quickly tell us a little bit about your oh, television show. So we started producing our own talk show. Uh, it's called the Trend Talk, and we're on. Me TV, M E T V on Sundays, and it's anything that's trendy. Naiba Reynoso is my co-host, and we executive produce the show. And uh, like, we're not waiting for somebody to do it. We we also have like uh, an event that uh, caters to our audience, which is called Latina Fest. We're going to have it in August twenty fifth. So um, just go to Latina Fest, go to Latin Heat Mag. Go to Bell's Coolest, B-E-L-S-C-O-O-L-I-S-T, and check it out. We have a lot going because we're not waiting around for anybody to give us anything. Well, I think that that's the thing that we're going to definitely leave the audience with today. If you're looking for it, they won't open the door, create a window. That's right.
Bell Hernandez, thank you so much for being with me. I just love you, have so much respect, and it's such an honor to have you with me. Likewise. I, I love women who are just out there doing it, and congratulations on your show. I know it's going to be a hit because it's Josefa Salinas' show. <laughs> thank you. Join us again right here on the Josefa Salinas Show. <laughs>